And one NGO or non-governmental organization that works with geomapping is Humanitarian Open Street Maps Team, also called HOT, or H-O-T, HOT. And our next speaker, I'm so excited to have the executive director of HOT with us here today. Let's give him a big hand, Tyler Radford. Thank you. Great, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here today. One of the favorite things, uh, when I was thinking about my talk today, one of the favorite things about working in a global open community um, like Wikipedia or OpenStreetMap is that wherever you go throughout the world, you always run into old friends. And sometimes uh, those old friends are people who you only know by their username or only know online. Um, but you meet, and you meet people who are doing amazing work throughout the world. And so today I want to tell you uh, three stories from some of our community members around the world. Last year I traveled to Tanzania and I met Sada. So Sada is a university student in her second year at Ardi University and she was working in an industrial training program with us. Um, and she was working to survey or map her city of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Uh, when Sada offered to take me out on a little mapping tour of the city, one of the things that most impressed me is that she, a, a student in only her second year of university, was confidently ordering around a group of male students several years older than her. Um, when I talked to her about what she was doing, she told me that just a few years earlier, her family home was actually flooded up to the roof and that she was displaced out of her home for three days. And during that time, she wasn't able to attend school uh, she also lost most of her books in, in that flooding. But Sada wasn't content with being simply a disaster survivor. She was taking an active role in building resilience in her community, um, mapping every individual kilometer of road and every meter of the drainage system in Dar es Salaam. Also in Tanzania, I met uh, two other women. On the left there, you'll see Roby, and on the right, you'll see Janet. So Roby is a survivor of female genital mutilation, or FGM. This is a process by which a child's genitalia are altered or injured at a very young age um, in Tanzania. Roby, not content with merely being a survivor of FGM, was taking an active role in changing this uh, pattern for hundreds of other young girls in Tanzania mapping the location of remote villages throughout her country in order to locate and rescue girls from the practice. In Uganda, I visited, and that's me on the right there, you can see the sort of the, the back of me walking along. Um, this is in Bidi Bidi. So Bidi Bidi is the second largest refugee settlement in the world. There I met Michael Yanni. Michael's a South Sudanese refugee and Michael, not content with merely surviving the war in South Sudan, was waking up every day, getting on the back of a motorcycle with his driver, and going out and collecting map data um, throughout areas that hosted nearly one million South Sudanese refugees. I wanted to let Michael uh, introduce himself. Hello, uh, Michael Yanni. I'm a South Sudanese uh, refugee. I was sitting in Rhino Camp, refugee settlements of Wazo. Yeah. Hello, I'm Diane Amando Ogunu. I come from Omogo, Arua, Uganda. Together, we, we work with Hot, hot Uganda. Uganda. Now, to the SDGs, you heard this morning about uh, the 17 global goals. I think Michael also mentioned the 169 targets. There are also 232 indicators, and these indicators are uh, how we measure our progress towards achieving the goals. There's a big problem here, though. Nobody has this data. No one individual or organization has this information. The SDGs also call for leaving no one behind. But Sada, Roby, and Michael are all working in places around the world where people are still not being counted. Going back to BDBD, you see it here on the map. This is an area, as I mentioned before, um, the population of England's second largest city, Birmingham, 
and twice the land area of Paris. This is how it appears on, on most maps, a single point. We believe that there are thousands of such locations throughout the world, up to one billion people living in areas that don't appear on any publicly available map source. If everyone counts, if we're to leave no one behind, then we need to know where people live. We need to know the location of every home, every school, every hospital. Going back to northern Uganda, I wanted to show you a few maps of how our community works to, to make a difference here. As you see each dot on the map light up, this represents one individual facility. Some of these are health facilities or clinics, some of these are schools. These are being added to the map by community mappers working either remotely or on the ground in Uganda, uh, filling in what looks to be a blank canvas. And again, you can see the process. This is a time-lapse video uh, late 2017 into early 2018 about how the process works for roads. Thousands of edits are being made by mappers around the world and on the ground in Uganda as they traverse each kilometer of road, each footpath, each trail, and make that data publicly available via OpenStreetMap. We also now have artificial intelligence and machine learning to make this process happen faster. So you can see here an experimental uh, editor, map editor from Facebook, which automatically detects road segments from satellite imagery and helps our mappers uh, to work better and, and faster and smarter and produce higher quality data. But you simply can't see it all from the sky. We do need uh, local knowledge and contributions from the ground. Here you see my colleague Joffrey working in northern Uganda. He's out surveying a, a water point. If we want to know the name of this street in the local language, if we want to know what's sold in this shop, this is the person that we need to be asking. This is the person that needs to be contributing. And if we want to live in a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge, then we need to create a world in which every person is free to easily and seamlessly contribute that knowledge. Uh, to date, we've had one million contributors to OpenStreetMap. 200,000 of those contributors were working for causes specific to the SDGs or the global goals. But it's, it's quite simply, it's not enough. We have what I'm going to call a matching problem. So, with the proliferation of the sharing economy, we have apps like Uber and Airbnb to match up supply and demand. But open knowledge is a little bit different. We don't have an Uber for open knowledge or local knowledge. Um, the, when we look back to the Wikipedia vision, this is one in which every human being can freely share in the sum of the world's knowledge. The humanitarian open street map vision is one where every person is counted that the knowledge that they share and produce is, actually gets used in decision-making that can save and improve lives. And that every person has a right to be able to engage and actually contribute their knowledge to the map. We build the best map of the world when that map, represent, map represents the collective knowledge of the world. If every place must be mapped, every person should have an opportunity to take part in that process. So I'll show you one example. This is SDG target 11.5, which focuses on reducing the number of deaths and number of people affected by disasters. Uh, local contributions play a key part to actually achieving these SDGs. And I want to make it very clear why, what's the link between data and information and contributing the goals. Here it is. Uh, these are some of our university students who are working to walk house by house, building by building, standing sometimes ankle deep in water, to record places that are prone to flooding historically. When you combine thousands of these contributions together, you're able to see um, maps that look something like this. So this is, as you see it swipe uh, from right to left there, this is the before and after, an area that's seemingly, uh, seemingly blank is a place that actually has thousands of buildings in it. Um, and through this process of adding those buildings to the map and then walking the ground to color in the local detail of which buildings may have experienced flooding, we get to know more about a place, more about a location. 
and can then start to actually make decisions that, um, that can reduce uh, the impact of disasters or other crises. I've talked a lot about the data that gets produced, but it's not only about the data. Contributing local knowledge to a project like OpenStreetMap or to Wikipedia um, or any of the Wikimedia projects, this really empowers young people to play active roles in their communities, so developing awareness and advocacy. The, con the community contributed data can certainly help to monitor some of the SDG indicators and, and gauge our progress towards some of the targets. But most importantly, the process by which it's collected, um, as contributors become more aware of the world around them, uh, helps them to d develop also critical technology skills and, and skills that will benefit them beyond the, the immediate period of contributing to the project. So back to northern Uganda, again, to BDBD. If you remember back to, to Michael's introduction, um, his, Michael and his team collected more than 2,400 water points. So these are all the individual wells and boreholes, sources of drinking water uh, throughout the refugee settlements. The ones indicated in red are not functional. So these are places where um, the well is dried up or there's no drinking water um, accessible on a, on a regular basis. The, by, by adding these points to the map, um, refugees are very directly making their voices not only visible, but heard by the international humanitarian community um, to respond and take action to. And this enables taking action on targets like 6.1, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. So uh, I also would like to share a few ways on how I see the OpenStreetMap community and the Wikimedia community coming together to tackle some of these big issues and some of these big challenges. One of the things we're working on right now is a guide um, called Open Mapping for the SDGs. And this talks about how open data, especially geospatial data, can play a role in contributing to SDGs. And it also gives you a sense of how to do this locally in your own country. I would love for the Wikimedia community, um, and I would love to talk to you all about this during the weekend, um, to think about how we can do something similar uh, for Wikimedia, how, each, uh, how some of the projects contribute directly to the goals, and maybe even uh, write a combined guide together or think about sharing uh, information together. I'm talking about linking the two projects. So we know that Wikidata, Wikidata and OpenStreetMap are much stronger together. Um, just to give you a few examples of that, so the, the animation you're seeing is um, in OpenStreetMap's ID editor. You can now add, and I think we're looking at a, um, a public, maybe a, it's a fountain or something like that. You can now add Wikidata tags um, within OpenStreetMap. Um, and so those will link uh, the, two, the two data sources together. One of the other OpenStreetMap projects is we're working on building a common list of brand names of things like uh, stores, pharmacies, et cetera, so that when you add those types of establishments to the map in OpenStreetMap, um, we, we can then link out to um, the Wikipedia article that, that references that. Um, we know that place is very important to both projects. And there's also a, a session happening later today, which I'm look, really looking forward to, about a new tool you can access at osm.wikidata.link to help find matches that exist in both projects and, and link those up together. So I mentioned before, 17 global goals, 169 targets, 232 indicators. I think the most important thing that I thought that I want to leave us with today is um, it's not a technical one. It's not a, it's not a data recommendation. It's about how our two communities might be able to work together, um, and especially towards the goal of helping every person in every country to be able to contribute to the projects, breaking down barriers and helping to build communities where they don't exist. So I'd love to speak with each of you around how we might be able to do that um, in the countries that we're working. And finally, if you remember Sada from Tanzania, I'd like to maybe finish up by just showing you a little video of what she's been up to.
And thanks to Chris Morgan and Fundi Films for opening this up under a Creative Commons license to share today. I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I have to give you a hug as yeah. well. I think, I mean, wow, what yeah. an amazing work you are doing here. Thank it's, you very much. Uh, it's uh, really touching my heart. And as a tiny appreciation, but from Wikimania Sweden, we would like to hand over a donation that's made in your name to the UNDP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming here. Thank, Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Tyler. Tyler.